morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Special welcome to, special welcome to our guests and visitors that are both in-house and online. We are glad you are here. Dear siblings in Christ, God created you with a clean heart to be open to the seed of God's word. And the Spirit has gathered us to be nurtured through worship and prayer today. A number of announcements for you. However, if you are a gentleman in the house or online, happy Father's Day. Men make a difference in our world, and we give thanks to God for all men. So I offer these prayers written by pastor, theologian, author, and seminary professor Leah Shane. We pray for men who are expected fathers, those who are waiting with joy, and those who are filled with uncertainty and fear. We pray for men who are new fathers, that they may be full partners in caring for and raising their children. We pray for men and women who long to be parents, who struggle with infertility. Join their cries with those of Sarah and Abraham, Hannah and Elekna, Elizabeth and Zacharias, and your will will be done in their lives. We pray for men who are fathers, either by birth, by adoption, through foster care, or through raising grandchildren. We pray that they may be supported in their parenting by their partners, fellow fathers, their workplaces, supervisors, and other men in their lives, that their children may be provided with sufficient food, shelter, education, and health care. We pray for fathers who have lost children, either in utero, through sickness, through war and violence, or through tragic accident. Comfort them, Holy Spirit, with your everlasting presence and assure them of eternal life. We pray for fathers who are incarcerated, fathers who have been abusive, fathers who have been hurtful and neglectful, fathers who have left their families. We pray for your will to be done in their lives and in the lives of their families. We pray for men who give of themselves not just through childbearing, but with their intellect, their skills, their gifts, and their physical abilities. Bless all men who, that they would advocate for others. We pray for boys and men who struggle against a culture of toxic masculinity. We pray for men who strive to protect and advocate for those most vulnerable, children, the poor, God's creation, the disenfranchised, women, and those men and women whose voices go unheard. May they heed your call to justice. We pray for those for whom this is a day of mourning and sadness, for those who have lost fathers and other important men in their lives, that they may be comforted with the peace that passes all understanding. We give thanks for men who have been our fathers, grandfathers, uncles, brothers, husbands, sons, life partners, and friends. We give thanks for women who have had to serve as both mother and father as a single parent for their children. We pray for men who strive to reflect the caring, affection, nurturing, and friendship model by our triune God. Give them your grace and bless all men all the days of their lives. Men, we have a gift for you today, so we'll have the children hand those out later. But go to Andrews, partially on the church. We have a $5 coupon for you to get something delicious to eat here in town at Andrews. I've been asked to make the announcement that we need some muscles today. Anybody out there have any muscles they're willing to share? 
Uh, perhaps men, you're a little bit on the spot right now. There you go. Women have muscles too. There's a number of totes near the restrooms uh, with quilting supplies that need to be carried downstairs. Doris will be happy to show you where they are to go in the storage room with other totes. But uh, after worship, if a few people could help with that, that would be appreciated. With that in mind, join us for fellowship after worship today. There are some delicious refreshments and beverages down there. Let's gather around the tables and share our Christian friendship with one another. I draw your attention to the scrolling announcements. Today, the Baby Bottle Project does end. We run Mother's Day to Father's Day. If you forgot your filled baby bottle at home, bring it in this week. We'll wait another week uh, to have them come retrieve those. It's a way we can love and support growing families in our world. I want to invite you to save two dates, and there's a correction in your bulletin. Sunday, June 23rd, beginning at 4.30 p.m., we're going to have a stringing the school kit bags party and potluck here. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring your family. You don't have had to have done this before to come and do this now. We will teach you. Many hands makes the work light. We have, again, 224 bags to string this year. Meat, beverages, table service will be provided. If you could bring a dish to share, that would be great. Then just four days later, on the 27th, Thursday, um, at 9.30 a.m., a group of people are going to carpool from here all the way over to the Moonshine Burger Joint uh, to have lunch together. And then they're going to journey on to MVP in Newton for some exploring and possibly even uh, the big, large art exhibits in Casey. So invite a friend or neighbor, take the day off on Thursday the 27th, and go on a little road trip. I want to invite you on behalf of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion today. That table behind me is not mine. It is not yours, people and friends of St. Paul. That table behind me belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he welcomes all people. That includes you, dear friends, online as he transcends all time and space so prepare your elements at home, either given by the church or something resembling bread or cracker and beverage, and partake in that holy meal with us. Are there any other announcements for the good of the whole today? All right. I invite you to stand in body or spirit. Take a deep breath with me. We sing our opening hymn.
God our provider. Help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when we differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life and the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated for the communion.
Sorry about this. <laughs> it's not time to harvest yet, Brian. When you plant those seeds, which were corn seeds, this is an early sprout of corn. Look at the roots. And they have roots. Now I want you to remember this when you plant a seed or seeds, you have roots. Remember that, okay? We've got here. I'm going to start down here with that one. What do you think those are? Uh, work with me here. <laughs> Green bean. We're going to get you in some farming school here. <laughs> what do you think? here, but when you plant those, this is what you get. Soybeans. These are early sprouts of soybeans. And what do they have, just like the corn? Roots. Very good. You were listening about the corn. Alright, now this one here is you're going to like this one. What is this? No, not sunflower seeds. No, they're over there. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Harrison? When you now those you don't plant. You pop. <laughs> A 
little seed out of one of those little packets. The seed that we planted like a couple months ago? Yes. Ooh. And with a little sun, a little warmth, and a little water, you get this. Now, what do you think is probably right about here in this pot? What's that? Very good roots. So, being a kid in started school, have you ever been told a story in school about a guy who walked around the world and planted seeds? You know what his name was? What do you think, Ridley? His name was Johnny Appleseed. He walked around the world planting seeds, but he planted apple seeds and got apples. Now you're probably wondering, I'm going to use my cheat sheet here. What does Johnny apple seed got anything to do with planting seeds? Well, what he has to do with our Bible lesson today is like a parable that Jesus told in our Bible reading for today. The kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seeds on the ground night and day. Whether he is asleep or awake, the seed will sprout and grow. But the man doesn't know how it happens. Well, just like Johnny Appleseed was passionate about planting seeds, so was Jesus. He planted seeds in us to go out and talk about Jesus. And we are like, like the roots. We plant the seed. Roots are grown for people to possibly live a better life and preach the word of Jesus. What do you think of that? The cold? Well, you can go outside this week. You won't be too cold. <laughs> <coughs> so let's say a little prayer if we can, okay? Father, just as Johnny Appleseed planted apple seeds everywhere he went, let us plant seeds of faith in Jesus Christ wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, well, thank you, young ladies. Would you like to go spread <coughs> seed? Words of thanks to the men in our lives. Any man you see out there in worship today, would you go make sure they have one of these? All right? And here's your worship over if you want that. If you have leftover coupons, if you just come right up and sit around the seat where I sit, that would be great, okay? But make sure that every guy, can you see guys out there? You see some? Guys, raise your hand so they can find you. Oh, I see one in the back who's like, give me the coupon. <coughs> Come on up in the loft. There's some guys up in the loft. All right. We turn our hearts and our minds to the Holy Scriptures. Our first reading this morning from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a spray from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. 
Word of God is your book. Thanks From the book of Psalms, we will read responsibly as printed in your book. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name. All the time to hear of your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. On the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout with joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the forest of our life. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright our Lord is, my God, in whom you are his own judges. Our second reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. So we are always confident. Even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Work in all things. 
bringing about a new creation everywhere. In my study of this scripture this week, specifically the gospel, and in our study on Thursday night, I came to something I didn't notice on Thursday. I thought Jesus was speaking to a bunch of farmers. He must be if he's talking about seeds. I stand corrected, Jerry and Roger. As I reread further back, Jesus is actually talking to a group of fishermen. That's very interesting to me. He is not using language that they would have easily understood because they were the fishermen of the day. Farmers would have understood the seed language better. Jesus likes to tell little stories that you have to really dig deep and think about for the meaning for you and for your family and for the time and space in which you live. That is how the seed of God's word still works today. Have you ever been in a space of worship where you left worship like all excited and like, wow, that was a great message. The music was wonderful today. I loved it. I feel so empowered for the rest of the week. And yet the person you're having coffee with says, I didn't get anything out of it. I thought it was boring. Actually, I think the pastor was kind of pointing fingers at people today. God's word influences our individual hearts in different ways. God created our hearts good to receive God's word. And how that grows in each of us is something that is a mystery. But it is the power of God's love to influence human hearts and minds differently. Three brief examples. When I entered seminary, I went there as a seed from northern Illinois, planted in Dubuque, Iowa, yet another farming community. Yet all of the seeds that were gathered to learn from God's word, we all showed up to that space of the common ground of seminary quite differently. Each individually, beautifully, and wonderfully made, each nurtured in our own communities to which we had lived, and yet we came together. We were transplanted under the roof of seminary through the gift of technology to dissect God's word, to get to the root of it and try to gain a better understanding of what it meant for people over 2,000 years ago and what it means for us today. I entered seminary as Maria Bonine. I left seminary as Maria Bonine, but I was not the same person when I left. Transformation took place in my heart and my mind, and things that I thought I knew were transformed. I want to give you a very specific example. This month, we celebrate Pride Month. That may not have meaning for you or people in your family, but it does have special meaning for other people and their families. I entered seminary as someone who could not get behind supporting gay and lesbian people. I'm not sure why. I wasn't really taught that. But in my study of God's word with other people. I came to realize that God's love is more expansive than the little mindset and the boxed mind that I entered seminary with. God's love is for all people. And if God's love was for me, how could I believe that God's love wasn't for someone else who was different from me? That process 
of new learning, that process of transformation has now put a voice in me to advocate for people who are shamed for who they are. People who are mocked and ridiculed for who God created them to be. My dear siblings in Christ who are of the LGBTQIA plus community and your families, you are beautifully and wonderfully made, and God loves you just as much as God loves me and everyone here. That was a big transformation for me. Some of you are gardeners. You see transformation happening right out in your yard. You get your rototiller out, and the grass and the weeds that have grown are now turned to fresh, fertile, brown soil, all of the ickiness picked out, and you plant your seeds and you water them day after day, and the sun shines and it rains, and you wait for that growth to come from the ground. How that happens, surely you do not know exactly. It is a mystery of God's creation. Thank God for science who teaches us that the seed has to break open in order for it to grow into the plants that Brent was showing us. Now, if you love gardening, you probably tend to your garden every single day. You go out and you pluck the weeds every day so that at the end of the week, you don't have such a hot mess to deal with. Because once those weeds start growing, it's really hard to get them under control and to distinguish plant from weed. God's word is something for us to tend to every day. Nurturing our faith through reading the scriptures, through devotional time, through prayer is like that of tending to our gardens. The more we submerge ourselves in God's word and prayer, the more that will grow in us. The more that the weeds will be plucked out and stay away. I was reminded of this yesterday by a sweet, dear child who had to pluck some weeds from my life for me. I made a comment about how my summer clothes were not fitting me as nicely as they did last summer. I made a harsh remark about my own body and my chubbiness. To which an eight-year-old child said to me, Don't say that about yourself. Thank you, dear eight-year-old child, who has learned well from their pastor that says, God created you, beloved. Extra fluff and all. God created us, beloved. It's beautiful to be corrected by an eight-year-old child when my negative self-talk was not speaking love to myself. But what I'm most excited about is what will happen in that eight-year-old girl as she grows older and she looks in the mirror at herself and she starts to change as she gets older and she may notice things she doesn't like. I trust that God will touch her heart and remind her of the day that she said to her pastor, Stop. Don't say that about yourself. That child knows the message of God's love better than I did for myself yesterday. We let all kinds of things yet in the way of growth happening within ourselves. We let weeds infiltrate our lives. 
if there are any messages that are not of God's love, then they are not of God. The kingdom of God is growing. Yet we as church people often live in a place of fear when we look around and we see that we are aging, when we look around and we see that there are empty pews, when we look around and we wonder where did so-and-so go and how come they're not here, when we wonder why our invitations for people to come and join us have not borne fruit, we get worried and we get so concerned about what comes next. And when we do that, we fall into the pit of sin and fear and darkness. And we forget that it is while we sleep that God is at work, that things are growing. We think it's all our work and we put the pressure on ourselves and we forget that God is the actor in this world making all things new. We heard it from Paul. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. We don't like change, but things becoming new is exactly change. How can a seed become something so beautiful and new? I do not want to eat a hard popcorn seed, but I want to eat the popcorn because it's delicious. Seed corn has no importance to me in that little bag other than it's pretty colored, but boy, I'm so glad that I gasoline in my car. Thank you farmers for corn. Jesus died and was buried. And he rose from a tomb for you and for me. In his doing so, he transformed all lives so that you may live a fuller, abundant life life in Christ. I look back at my seminary days and the change that happened in me. I did not love the person that entered seminary, but I love the person that I am now because God continually provides me with the strength and the courage to love all people even and especially those people with whom I may have difficulty forgiving and loving. That is transformation in my heart. Still capable for weeds to come in like they did yesterday. And yet as fellow siblings in Christ, we remind each other of God's love for us. God is the creator of all good things. God created you good. And God has called you to love and to serve, not just with the ability you've been given, but with the help of God, your creator. I want to encourage you this week. On your journeys, home, in your yard, going for a walk, going to the store, look around you and notice the diversity in our world. Things have changed. We have many more flowers and plants and trees than we've ever had before. Just some Friday, I was taking Alverna for a stroll through the courtyard at the Lutheran Care Center, and I noticed these beautiful purple petunias that I've never seen with white flecks on them that looked as if someone just splattered paint like this. I've never seen them before in my life. 
and doesn't mean they're any less beautiful. Perhaps God, through the work of science and through the work of other people, is creating new things. He's always at work in you, in me, and in all of creation. May we wrestle with the challenge of embracing the newness of life that God intends for us to have. Thanks be to God. Jason Fisher, 
and the Synod Listening and Strategic Planning Team. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Creator God, nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation. Days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your constancy. We pray to you.
about to receive, let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have ascended this table with your very power and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Is it indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God? Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.